What I'm thinking about watching is the Oscar mirror. I can say with like pretty much certainty, I think this is the most complicated fighting game match I've ever seen. I've definitely never commentated a fighting game match more complicated than this. And I don't imagine there's very many characters in very many games that are as complicated as Asuka. He's like all the way up there in terms of difficulty in any game, particularly any game in the last like 10 to 15 years. It was like really tiring to commentate. So I can only imagine how it is to play. Uh, obviously this happened this weekend. You should check out the tournament. It was super fun. So I'll give you guys a breakdown of how this works. And by like a couple of minutes, you'll know how Asuka works. What makes him so complex and like why his win conditions are so strong? Because if you don't know what he does and you watch this weekend, you probably just thought, dude, this cube guy seems really cheap. And then he loses sometimes and you're like, I guess the guy got lucky. You don't really know what exactly happens. It's just like, oh, I guess cube man's not cubing as much. <laughs> The only person that I know that has him really, really high is Gobo. They asked Gobo his tier list and Gobo said Asuka is the best character in the game, which is funny. So the way he works is he is essentially a card game character. He has a deck that he draws from. That's the number you can see on the bottom of the screen. So this number here, 26 on both sides. This is the deck. When this number goes to zero, he has drawn every card in the deck. And then it recycles the deck and then he gets it again. It's RNG, it's random order what he pulls. And these are the slots. Each of these slots down here corresponds to a button. Punch, kick, slash, and heavy slash all have a different card associated to them. If you do quarter circle forward in that slot, you will play the card. If you do quarter circle back in that slot, you will unload that card. And if a card is missing, then you will load a new card into that slot. They're shortcuts. So if you shoot a cube, you can hit forward plus another strength of the button to shoot another slot. So you can do core circle forward and then hit all four attack buttons and you'll go foom, 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 foom and shoot all four strengths. And then you can hit back and hit all four attack buttons and you go zoom, 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 zoom and reload all of the different things. So that's how it works. This costs some mana, which is this gauge here. There's already a lot of stuff going on. The other thing about him besides shooting the cubes is that he mostly has one win condition that he does, which is he gets out of this deck. He has oh, you're three decks now. and each of these decks have different cards in them. He has one of the deck that is like mostly mix up cards. You never really see that played. The other deck that he plays in is when the number turns blue. That is deck three. That's the deck that all Asuka players want to do. The primary win condition for Asuka is to start the round, get a hit or get space, swap to the new deck, load your hand with new cards from this deck, and then play them because they're more powerful, right? The starting deck is like, it's your starter deck. It's not that good. Deck three tends to be the deck that most people want to play in. And the real win conditions in that deck are auto import, which refills your hands as you play stuff. And then there's a card that's green, will automatically regen your mana, which is so important. He shoots his spells and reloads his spells, and then he has to manually regen mana by using his health, which is the fastest way to do it. If he has the mana regen card, he doesn't have to stop. It makes him way more efficient. And the cool thing about this mirror, Gobo is incredibly fast at what he does. He's the fastest Asuka, I think. He is so fast at playing cards out of his hand and reloading cards and refilling his mana. But I actually think his situational awareness with cards is worse than Zondo. Like he plays the, the deck like more correctly, but at a loss of speed. Gobo plays his hands faster, but at a loss of efficiency. And the cool thing about this character is that he has lots of win conditions where you see him winning really hard. But he also has conditions where his hand is legit terrible and he just dies. Oh, another thing that's important, dual one, there's the hand. Look at how quickly before round start you have to analyze what your hand is. You have so little time to see what your cards are before the game starts. It's a split second to scan. And that's so important because this card here is the giant cube. It's like the big or the big red circle that he does. Big red is so good on round star and so good in general to wall out your opponent. The other important cards to see at round star are the refill card. So he has an auto bookmark card, which refills all the empty slots in your hands. And then there's also uh, his DP. He has a little blue icicle card, which is an invincible DP. He doesn't you play it or get it that often because it's in this test case. And usually he's in test case three, the third deck. If you start with the card that refills your hand, 
the general idea of your starting hand is you shoot all three other cards, you swap the test case three, and then you play the card that refills your hand. And then all of your cards that you reload with are the good cards from the new test case. Does that make sense? I asked if that made sense and everybody said no. Okay, well, I'll show you. They both do 6P into cube at round start, which is very big. Uh, so notice that Gobo plays the staff. And then the first thing Gobo does is swap. You see how the number is blue now instead of the color over here. This blue color with 30, this is test case three. The reason test case three is so good, is it has lots of cubes, which are his main projectile, or all the projectiles he shoots. It has a staff that is really powerful that pulls the cubes towards it. That gives you lots of uh, control of the screen, mix ups, damage, all that kind of stuff. And it has the auto import, which gives you like refills your cubes when you shoot them or your hand when you shoot them at the cards and it has auto mana regen it has some bad stuff you can draw also but it also has the strongest things that he can draw so he ga he gains the mana back and then he starts to draw cards and notice the things that he's drawing here right teleports pretty good options but you need something offensive to do with it this is his guard crush this is very powerful this gives him a really good mix up very scary card for him to draw yeah, this is uh, Gobo's hand is pretty solid in general. Also, also, the other thing about Asuka is that he needs space to do this kind of stuff, and in the mirror, he tends to have that quite a bit. Um, so it's pretty important. Uh, Zondo on the other side, by the way, drew great cards, and he's in a really good spot. Zondo swaps swaps his test case, and then immediately draws some great cards here. So he reloads, his, he sacrifices health, he uses this wall of cubes to reload his hand and he gets some great options so this green card here is very important because this is a mana regen card this is the wall of cubes card this is a guard crush and this is the big cube you'll see it it's the big cube yeah that's the big cube really good for putting them in block stun it lets him reload cards or reload mana or or whatever he wants to do right and then it also lets him get the other cards going so he teleports and then he does guard crush he shoots the big one he has auto import going so every time he spends uh, a card, he can reload if he wants, which is really nice. Oh, that's a gnarly mix up. Reloads. He's got the low here. Tab dust. 6K is also, that's the low. Very scary thing to get hit by. And it's really good because the character has a guard crush. So a low is really good to catch people after. How do you commentate this in real time? You have to pay attention to what a block. You have to pay attention to both. Another thing is I mentioned that he can channel, he can do card into card. This is an example of that. You can teleport and then shoot one of these options here <clears throat> for an immediate mix up, which is what he does right there. That is very important in this tournament because famously Peppery Splash beats Leffen by doing the same thing. He, um, he does like teleport cancel into the big cube. And it's very good. Again, round start. Did you see how fast they have to identify the hands? You look at the hands and he's got big red. Boom, that's big red. Big red is so good because now, so, like, the difference in their round start hands are so important because Gobo has big red. It hits on, like, frame nine or something. It's really fast. It hits a ton of space. And then not only that, but it gave him space to swap test case and then start loading new cards. So he just goes big red, cancel into reload, cancel into cube, cancel into test case swap. Cancel into cube, cancel into reload. Like he just, yeah, he immediately starts machine gunning the stuff that he wants to do, right? So, you know, <clears throat> very good for him. He has auto import as well. The green card is the one I mentioned earlier. It allows his mana to auto refill. You notice how his mana is green and um, Zandos is not. This card here is auto import. When you play this card, after you spend something, it auto refills. So notice that he's playing cards and his hand is auto refilling. This is the win condition for the character. You get auto import, which then refills your hand automatically without you having to waste time. And you get auto mana regen. Those two cards together, you can imagine, is a very powerful win condition because now you're, you're um, auto refilling and auto regening stuff, right? And then this hand is brutal. He's got the staff on him that gives him better. Yeah, the staff is brutal. And then he also has the mana regen and he also digs for auto import again. So be scary stuff. Uh, this is basically Exodia. It's it's what he's looking for. He has big cube here, and then this staff, it affects the gravity of the cubes, and it pulls the cubes to them. So the big cube here, you notice swirls like that, and by creating a gap, it makes mix-ups better. It makes it it makes a combo off of this. So this this is like basically the worst possible case scenario for what Asuka does to you. He gets the, the gravity cube or gravity staff on you that like pulls the stuff in. Right, and then he gets auto import, and then he gets the mana regen. Those are the win conditions for the character. Zondo here also gets auto import, so he's gonna play auto import, 
and then he's gonna put the the staff out same thing so he's he's doing the exact same thing gobo just did that's what he's fishing for his biggest win condition is that order nice that was so smart he notices last time that gobo blocked the teleport mix up so instead of doing teleport into cube he just teleport and immediately throws him he also didn't have a fast cube to do here what does the screen pause super do i'll explain it the next time he does it because you you do it a lot but basically it's a super and the super allows him to hit the button that corresponds with the slot in his deck and change the card. So it allows you to essentially cycle your hand. So as fast as you are during that super allows you to change that many cards. So basically, every time you do it, you can dig for whatever options you are. So if you're Asuka, you do the super, you dig for like mana regen, auto import, and then offensive cubes. Notice this round star from Gobo. He is so fast. His starting hand that you can see very at the last second here, this right here, this card in the first test case, swaps all of your missing slots for new cards, right? You want to like play out your cards and then swap to the new deck and then refill those with the new strong cards, right? So what he does is shoot the cube, shoot the cube. So he unloads two slots, swaps to the new test case, play this card, and then it refills all three of those slots with new and improved cards from his new deck, right? Swap and keep the one he wants, right? He has the overhead, which is the last card he's playing right now. And look what he pulled. He pulls auto import, teleport, cube, fast cube for mix up, and then he has the overhead from the old hand still. So now it's overhead, and then he's got big cube teleport, yep. And this is the thing, it's like, he recognized the win condition so fast. He got auto import again, by the way. He can re refill his mana here. The big thing he's missing, Gobo, is a uh, mana regen card. He has auto import here, and he just pulled mana regen. He's cycling his hand. He does the super, and then he immediately realizes, oh, cool, I've got a green card. Okay, so he's cycling these three options. He's hitting the other three attacks on his controller to cycle because he's looking for the staff, that the gravity staff, and then he's like, cool, I have that. Then I can swap the other option for offensive cubes. Cool, now I have cubes to shoot into the staff. That's all the things a growing boy needs. Put out the staff, shoot the cube, then auto regen, then shoot the cube again, then reload hand. Now he's got teleport for mix up, shoot the cube, tap dust. You know, same kind of thing. He's got auto mana regen again. He drew auto importer, pop the auto importer, shoot the cubes. Through. Like, it's the same kind of like ideas. What a fucking confirm. It's the same kind of ideas, right? Every round, the objective is the same. Get to the, get to the new test case as fast as possible. Get the mana regen card, get the auto import card, find the staff, doom, 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 start shooting, right? Like that's the objective for this character. So that's what he's looking to do every time. He backdashes, shoots two options, swaps to the new test case. They both swap to the new test case. Zano has a staff plus the green card right now, though I don't think it's just, it's easy to get the staff down here, which is the problem. Yeah, teleport big red. He's got green already on, so he doesn't need to shoot the second green, but you know, he can now that it's getting lower. There's no mana here for Gobo, but it's he's just gonna, yeah. Cube Super is also insanely fast. It's not what a teleport. It's not invuln, but the Cube Super is really, really fast. You can hit the cubes as well. Yeah. Oh, nice dude. Nando. He's so good. Look at the recognition that he does here. This big cube's already out. And he plays the staff on top of Gobo's head, which pulls them up faster and makes it hit Gobo. You see that? So he manipulates the gravity of the cubes and pulls them to the new staff. Do you see this? Like, that is... Man. It, it Like, Gobo is in a safe position, and then Zondo manipulates, like, time and space to, sm to snipe him with his option. Pretty cool. Yeah, this is the big cube is so good because what it does is it puts you in so much block stun that it's very easy for Asuka to reload his hand or get mana back and then play new new options. You know, that's why it's so important for him. Oh, yeah, Zondo spot here is great. He's oh, he had guard crush and he has a uh, staff to play. He, his hand is kind of bad though. The problem with uh, Zondo's current hand is he has no offensive option, he has staffs and teleport. So, like, you notice how Zondo, really, like, kind of ran away there and didn't do much the whole time? The reason he's running like this is because he needs he needs to get space to pull cards and do stuff, right? And so Gobo just has offensive options that he can use. And so, unlike Zondo, he gets to play the game here. He, had, he didn't have any offensive cards there. Oh, my God. He drew teleport into teleport into staff into green card. He hasn't drawn until that spot. Gobo was digging the whole time. Look, he, he digs. 
He gets rid of one card, he finds a green card, he cycles, he digs again, finds another teleport, teleports away. He digs again, finds a staff. He He's not pulling anything that is offensive. All Gobo is doing is running, digging in his hand, and then finally finds a cube. And this blue cube is really fast. So teleports, air dash back, shoots the cube. Yeah, the red lines are no mana. So essentially, Asuka is a very tanky character. He's got a lot of life. When his life bar is blue like this, he's got mana. The minute he gets hit or overspends his mana and he runs out, it turns red like this. So you see how they're, they're X'd out. He doesn't have enough mana to play them. And then once you get hit and it turns red like this, he's like the squishiest character. When he gets hit, he just dies. He's, it's like every hit against him is like soul bad guy damage, no matter what character it is. He can't cast any spells and uh, he takes more damage from everything. So, you know, and the, the main way you get mana back is by spending your own health outside the mana regen card. Even then it's faster than that. And it's the same thing. Like Zonda right there has no mana, but he tried to run a Gobo while Do Gobo was digging in his deck to try to find an offensive spell. This round start, they both have blue cube. They both shoot the blue cube. I don't know why. Sometimes somebody wins, sometimes somebody trades. I don't know the timing difference here. I don't know why it worked. The, the thing is, is that Gobo's starting hand is pretty solid here. He has three offensive cards. He had blue cube, yellow cube, and the triple green. And then his other card is the refill. So what he's going to do is go cube, cube, and then swap, right? So he pulls a brand new hand. Wow, his hand is so funny. He's got two big reds, and then he had uh, what's it called? Oh, now he's got a teleport. He has the, the test case one staff though, I'm pretty sure, right? Gotta regen his life. So look at his life go down. Watch Gobo's life bar on the top, right? This is how you gain mana back, right? You spend your own life like that to, to do it. Now he's gonna cycle, pulls auto import, pulls a mana card, and then he swaps one of the mana cards. He pulled two manas, so he swapped one so that he could get more offensive cards in there. Yeah, he's gonna staff again, and then he reloads, and then he's got, he can teleport again here if he wants, or counters, that also works. And then, like, because the staff's on him here, this is, like, a much better spot for Gobo. Yeah, because the, the way the cubes get pulled into the staff is that they, like, bounce and, like, wiggle around. And that means they stay on the screen longer, which means you have more blocks done, which means you have more time to pull new cubes and new cards and cycle your deck and, like, swap test cases if you need to or get mana back or whatever. Gobo here is in a really good spot. He has so many good cards. He has the mana card. Yeah, he has, he has auto import now in his hand as well. So he can auto import and then cube up and then he can he can just uh prc yep he has auto import he plays auto import now i mean yeah he's got everything a growing boy needs he's got cubes got mana card right there he needs mana back though he needs to play the mana card plays the mana card big cube out now he can start shooting again 6k 6k is a low which hits zondo Reloads the hand, gets the mana back. He's got teleport available to cover distance. He cycles the teleport. He digs for the staff. Now he's got the staff to set up to and start shooting more cubes. And like, it's the same, same kind of process, right? I mean, that cube right there, what is Ando going to do? What the fuck? What the fuck is Ando going to do? Gobo just sits there and he's got auto import. So his hand is just refreshing. So he's just shooting cube after cube after cube after cube into the staff. And then everything cycles around. And then you get to do overhead lows into the staff. Like Zondo just has to sit there and wait. Staff again. Gobo had no offensive cards right there. Oh, he headshot his ass. Gobo had no cards here to shoot anything, right? So he digs in his deck, and the problem is he auto imports, and then he spends a card, and then he's got two teleports. And he digs, he finds the cube, and then he headshots him through the cube. Yeah, dropping the key, the staff on top of him. You can place the staff in, in different locations, by the way. You can choose where the staff goes. Your staff is the one that determines how your cubes work, yeah. The green card in this staff, or in this test case, from my memory, makes it so that your cards cost less, less energy. It's the gold. When, you're, when your bar is glowing gold like this, that's what this card is doing. And it's good that Zondo only spent one of them, by the way. He didn't spend the other. Nice anti air. The recovery on that is so fast. Reload. Uh huh. Oh, now he's got auto import. I mean, you're just dead. If the other person gets to do this, you're just dead. Like, Gobo has not cycled at all, right? Like, all he did was start the round and then get stuck on the back foot. And then he had, like, a handful of cards from the first test case still. He didn't get to, like, establish anything. On the other hand, Gobo drew... Oh, my God. Do you see his fucking hand here? He, he shoots the cubes. He swaps test cases. He draws teleport. He draws 
mana regen card, and then he draws a cube. He shoots the first cube, reloads, and draws the fucking full screen cubes. Plays the energy card, reloads, and gets auto import. Like, I mean, what kind of day is that, huh? He gets the energy card, and then he gets auto import, and then he's like, oh, cool, shoot the auto import, and then he's got another auto import. Oh, cool, I drew another energy card. Play the energy card again. He, he spent both teleports there, I think, because he wanted to get rid of it. He's cycling for staff here, and then some shit to shoot into the staff. Yep. Set up, set up the staff. Cycle his hand again. He gets another staff. Everything was perfect for him right there. Yeah, his hand. He pulled. That was basically like Gobo pulled perfect cards from, from like the start of the round. And like, yeah. I mean, when his hand is that good. Same strategy with the start of his his round star hand. He had the auto refill. So he played out all his cards, auto refilled, and he, he had another auto refill. So he's just he's gonna like dump his hand here, get into this test case, and then refill with new cards from this test case. So that was his plan of attack. Although auto import for Zondo means that he gets to go first here. Yeah. Oh my God, Gobo is gonna get deleted. Look at how much health that did. He, I mean, he's dead. He can't get his. Th this is also like Asuka is really snowbally, but he also really sucks at winning from behind. He's manaless. How does he gain mana? He needs to spend meter to gain mana back or do the slow one. And then he needs to find an energy card and then he needs to start snowballing. But if he ever, ever is not hitting you and recycling, he needs his health to get his mana, right? When he's losing, he's so whack. Like he really does not have a lot of ways to like win from behind. His, his win condition from behind is terrible. Like it's just so bad compared to how he is when, without it, right? So like a lot of people are like this character is just absurd like he's just so wild right and he is he is good right but the problem is he, he, there's nothing he can do in positions like that right like he's he's just really behind yeah the way you fight against him is you generally try to use your normals to clear the cubes and then cancel into special moves that get you towards him or something safe or whatever right the problem is it's really hard to do that for a lot of characters this mirror you don't see a lot of normals they just tend to shoot cubes at each other basically the whole time oh he, he did the wrong one Although a good hand for Zondo again here, by the way. He has auto import, he's got the energy card, and then he's got, uh, what's it called? The wall of cubes to try to get space. Problem is he just needs time to do it. Yeah, this is why Gobo gets to play offense here too, because Zondo doesn't have a fast, well, he has one now, but he didn't have a fast cube to like establish any kind of control of the match. Oh my God, he got energy and auto import. Four tell, look at Gobo's hand. He is like in the position, the god position to win everything, and he draws four teleports. His hand is just bricked. Like he has to, he has to do the cycle here. I think that's a mistake. He's he's not supposed to do this. I think I think he's supposed to do the other super, to cycle his hand. Because now he spends the whole round like trying to fix this terrible hand, and if he just did the super to cycle his hand, he would have actually had time instead of having to run for a while and do this, right? But he got the staff out anyway, and he got the, the bouncing cube, so he's probably fine. Okay, now his hand's empty, though. Yeah, I, I actually... Oh, there's no offensive cards from Zondo either. But, oh, now his, that's that's perfect. He drew perfect cards. Oh. He had no life, by the way. It's like he hits him, and then he needs to get life. He needs to get mana back, right? So he reloads, and then he's like, I gotta get, get in there. And then he spends his own life to get in, and then he spends mana regen again. So he had no life there. Well, it's funny, this kind of RNG is so whack. I mean, it's it goes both ways, right? Like, he has good and bad RNG sometimes. But the real thing is, is that he has ways to manipulate the RNG to be bad. Dude, help me. I'm not on the ground anymore. Oh, that mix-up was diabolical. He, they should let him mulligan. He can. He has a super that lets him, lets him fully change his hand. What a teleport. Holy shit. He has a super that does that. What a teleport again. Oh my god. He's dead. Here though, the problem became that Zondo's only cards in this round are like the starting hand, he swaps test cases, and then Gobo just gets offense, and Zondo's only cards in his hand are the big red and then auto import, and then he just gets mixed by teleport. The staff's still out, so then he supers. 
and then the staff pulls him up so then it's air block stun so then he has more block stun and then he supers back but it doesn't matter because he can cancel into super he's he's shooting a cube here right so he he shoots q the cube but like it's not, the teleport is so fast that he just goes and then he cancels the teleport into the guard crush which gives you huge height to combo mid screen he did guard crush into regen mana into dash up 5k wild assault and that gives you a, a knockdown that lets you do this he's got big cube he's got a million things to do this like yeah and he played that really well that cube super is not a reversal it's just really fast but yeah he is a character who is extremely snowbally offensively but also extremely snowbally defensively you saw multiple times in that set one of them was just like foom 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 playing all these good stuff and then like, had a bad hand he had to run away the other one went got the play and then he killed him in this version of the game like most people don't think asuka is top five or even they think he's like bottom of top 10 kind of area like pretty strong one of the stronger characters in the game but like not in the top five he is really really win more and then if he's losing he is really bad like it's really hard for him to come back i think he's got to be one of the hardest tournament characters to play in any fighting game like first of all the execution of like not fumbling the cards is really hard the brain power to not fumble the cards is really hard and then it also has like you have to be good on defense and just manage everything well and then not make a lot of mistakes it's the most complicated character I've watched, the most complicated set I've commentated, and he's the most complex character I've played in a fighting game or messed with. He is really not easy. And that's also part of uh, what makes him fun, honestly. Like, I'm really happy that Ringe and I were on commentary for it because you have to know what the character does or you're dead. Imagine someone's like, yeah, I know, I know some strive. I can commentate it, and then you get that match, right? Like you're fucking dead. That match is so hard to commentate. A lot of people said very nice things about me and Ringe on commentary this weekend, which was nice. A lot of people were like, "Man, it's so nice to listen to commentary where both commentators know the game so well, and are also really excited." And that was very nice of them. Somebody I will not name who watches a game that I will not say said, "Wow, this is the first time I watched some commentary, and the fucking commentators knew the game in forever." And I was like, "Damn." That's a sad thing to hear. <laughs> Listen. What's the big 50k check? This is the check for the winner of the SNK World Tour King of Fighters event. Yeah, it's me. I'm pretty, I've been busy, you know. Why do you have that? They were gonna throw it away. Like these big checks don't actually do anything, right? They're just for the winning moment. Production was like, yeah, we're gonna toss this. And I was like, why? And they're like, do you want it? And I was like, yeah, I'll take it. I just have it. Like, I don't know.